Call a meeting to order 502. Yes, Patty, do your thing. Um, okay, um, Mr. Smith, I'm going to uh, make a request that we discuss part of this budget in executive session because we do not have a negotiated co collective bargaining agreement, and parts of this budget are affected by that, and so we need to talk about some strategies regarding collective bargaining to talk about the budget. We'll entertain a motion. I think you need to do a roll call vote. You do. I second this. So you got to have a motion oh, first. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I took Patty's for explanation as a motion. So Phil, you made the motion and sure. you seconded it. Second. Mary? Roll, Phil? Yes. Okay. Keith? Okay. Mary? Yes. And myself is okay. And we will return to open session, but can't tell you how long. Two fifty five four ninety. Okay, and then so you have mentioned that about hundred thousand dollars every year that we can save. That has been traditionally? Yes. Because we get revenues, yeah. we okay. We're back, okay. back in open session, and we're gonna go through the rest of this. Okay. So if you look on page um, 319, I'm just going to go through um, the, the changes. So last year, our net school operating budget that was assessed to the towns was nine million seven forty-seven seven thirty. And even though we don't have a collective bargaining agreement uh, negotiated, we do have uh, collective bargaining steps that we must award, and those will total $55,036. We need an increase in our retirement line of $102,040. We have an increase for psychological services, uh, 0.4 FTE, that would cost approximately $30,810. The change of funding for the school choice budget would be 126934 The change of funding sources for the non-resident tuition revolving would be 38496 The number that I told you that for the changes in the health, the contract, and um, other um, uh, insurance issues is 276749 we are hoping with our retirement this <coughs> year that we could save about $63,237. Other operational increases is we have a increase in charter tuition of $69,788. Our SPED tuitions are going to increase by a small $2,957. And our increase in our retirement benefit, that is the money that we get assessed by the Franklin County Retirement. Uh, is $15,354. Um, the, the reason that's going up is that our percentage as a uh, total of all the Franklin County communities are higher. And they also have their funding thing, which we got whacked with that too. Um, we can decrease our legal fees <clears throat> by about $8,500. So the net change would be 646427 or 6.63% making the net operating budget assessed to the towns to $10,394,157. Um, the next page, I gave you an outline of what is happening with our school choice and charter revenues and tuitions. And as you can see, um, for the projected 17 column, for the first time, we, do, we have more expenses than we do revenues, which is the 69788 that we have increased on the front page. And also down below, I've showed you how we've used the money in the past, bringing forward the, um, the balances. So as you can see in FY 2016, our school choice charter is going to be negative 57916 But I have a note down here that says that we can move the shortfall to circuit breaker funding. Um, so that we, we won't have a negative balance in that fund. There's enough there. Patty, do you see this as a pattern going forward? Absolutely, Marty. Um, I, I think I warned, well, I don't want to say warned. I think I brought this up maybe in my second budget year that we were getting close because we only had, you know, 100,000, 120,000, and the charter kids keep moving out. Um, school. If we look at just school choice, we're doing well. Mm -hmm. School choice, we're doing well. We do have, we've got, we bring kids in. Um, I think our number is, um, oh no, I forgot which is in and which is out. Our, we bring in, 
for charter. We bring in 129 kids and we get 50, right. we have 52 going out. So our choice is good. The problem is the 36 students that are chartering out are costing us $656,794. So unless we see any major change at the state level in the funding formula, then this is, I, I think the school committee should be prepared for this as we go forward. Okay. Um, and you can see the state charter aid, which is under the revenue. In 15, we got 68,486. This year we're projected to get 157,67. Okay. Next year, we're going to only get 51504 and that's according to Governor Baker's budget that he put mm -hmm. out. So that's a decrease right there of $100,000. And I am going to do some research on why that number is so low based on that. So, I mean, it is something that we have to prepare for that we need to start. It's different at the elementaries because the money comes into the schools, but the towns have to pay the out. At the regional right. level, we have to take care of both sides of it. So we need to come up with a way to, that we're going to assess this so that it appears in our operating budget from now from going now going forward. Um, and then pages five through sixteen are the byline budgets. I do want to let, have you look at page sixteen for a second, though. If you look at the line that says total expenditures by school committee, it looks like we're only going up 5.84%. Mm -hmm. But that's because that includes the reduction of um, no debt assessment. So when I look down to what I need to assess, I take that m amount and then subtract the, what would have been the debt and also the regional transportation. And that's the amount that gets assessed to the towns for our operating budget, <coughs> which would be the 6.63%. Does that make sense? That was really fast. I okay. was following along for the first half. Okay. Okay. All right. So the way our budget works, our debt assessment and our transportation is separate. But the way my budget works in Infinite Visions, it's all in the same. So when I put this out of the system, I get the total expenditures by school committee. So if you look at FY16, it says 10,054,469. And the proposed is 10641559 The difference being 587.090, which is only an increase of 5.84%. But that's not uh, how we assess the towns for the operating budget. So I have to take from that number the amount of the transportation. So if you go down to net operating budget to assess the towns, you see my 9747730, which was last year's number, and the 10394157, which is this year's number, the difference being 646.427 or 6.63%. 6 so that accounts for that. Right. Okay. It's just the way that it comes out of the um, budget. Now, because we are um, projecting such a good rate increase, Usually at this time, when we are in finance subcommittee, we don't look at the assessments, but I think it's important that you get the full picture. So we have included on page 17 and 18 what the assessments under this budget scenario would look like. 17 is the summary, and 18 is the change in the five-year enrollment. And then page 19 is just all of the, um, the percentages based on the October 1st um, <coughs> enrollments and if you look at page 18 and look at the numbers that were dropped to me it's especially significant in some way and lately that the year dropped 2010 were um, very large classes so even though it looked like Deerfield dropped 249 and mm -hmm. they brought on 249 yep, so they're the same but they're not the same though because somebody if somebody else goes down somebody has to take right the difference. But, but their number right. is the same so yeah Deerfield's getting hit with the fact that Waitley and um, Sunderland are going down so much and Sunderland went up a little so Sunder I mean, I'm Conway and Deerfield are getting increases Sunderland and Waitley are getting decreases so our thought was to bring this before the full committee. We'll talk about some of the options to reduce the bottom line, um, give them some explanation as to the outgoing and incoming charter and choice, um, and get a sense of the direction of where the committee would like to go. I would suggest that we probably have another 
budget subcommittee, or at least check in at some point before we do. We're the, not at some. Hmm? We're not bound to vote a number tonight. Anymore. No, you're no. not. Because we're not. But for the public yet, hearing, no. 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 But before the public hearing in March, we'll probably want to get together again briefly. Before oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, okay. I, I the budget it. subcommittee is what yeah. I'm saying. So um, is that recommendation by Mrs. Barrett acceptable to the finance subcommittee that we present as is, or do you want to make recommend, do you have certain recommendations that you would like to make to them, or how would you like you, to handle I, it? I worry about using such a high percentage of V&D in one fell swoop, and I, it, it, the mm -hmm. purpose is, oh, oh, because it, the rainy day fund is, is this does this fulfill the definition? Yes. Well, we can use any. Wait, wait, prior we can use any, any there, portion right. of the yeah. 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 Like Phil, prior, to, prior yeah. to you coming on um, the Frontier School Committee, they always use a, a portion of the E and D yeah. to offset the assessment. All right, Bob always says that. I wondered about yes, that. Yes, okay. They always did. It was just in the past two years we have not because we didn't have a lot of money to do it. By law, I think you can keep what is that? Is it two percent, five percent, five percent of your. Operating budget. And we're and below that. We never, we, that's well, that's we, a pipe dream. Maybe someday we'll have Well, we were close this year. We were close this year. Right. And we, I don't know that we've gone below 100. <laughs> we've always kept 100. But when I was principal here, it seemed to fluctuate between 100 and 150 for the longest time it was in there. So, uh, you know, if you if you guys have options and, and some suggestions for the w way we can uh, reduce this number a little bit, you might as well. It's ten minutes, oh, five minutes. Oh, you might as well wait and explain it to the whole committee, right. and explain it to us, and then explain it to them again. That doesn't. Okay. You know, you explain it once, and we'll. As long as we don't have to vote on anything tonight, we can. You don't have to we'll vote on We'll all get the anything. information in there in, in a half an hour, right. or, and then we can digest it, and we can. We could come up with some kind of a recommendation as a subcommittee, to this to the entire committee, at some point after we we see what you guys have got up your sleeve. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Do you want to adjourn this meeting and then, because I know we do need to start the other meeting on time. Yep. So, so I need a motion to motion adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, and that will be um, at 5.51. 5.51.